we included that in our language especially this is why they're against because they know that they're going to lose their immunities too because in last year nevada their, their supreme court ended it for all government workers including prosecutors so there has to be accountability if we're going to have a free america for liberty and freedom for all we say justice for all let's mean that justice for all is important to me because i have sons i have grandsons nephews nieces even women are in danger you know what they shoot women too so yeah yeah like sandra bland right they they, they killed her you know yes Taylor was murdered introduced my guest she is one of the she's the chair of the ohio coalition to end qualified immunity i have miss cynthia brown joining me today good to have you back on miss cynthia thank you thanks for having me back on yeah great great it's good to see you last time uh you were a little bit late because you had just had a new grandbaby that was born and yes. i was excited for you when that happened so that was a good excuse so it is good it's great to have you back on now yeah he's almost a month now he was born june the 15th yeah oh man he's a, it's been a year yes what wow wait full circle moment that's what great. That? Has it been like eight? I don't know, maybe eight months. But anyways, thanks again for having me on and updating you know, your fans to hear about you know qualified immunity. So thank you. Definitely, definitely. So last time we were talking, we, we were talking, um, uh, we were talking to Kyle for most of the hour, and we were talking about the necessity and need for qualified immunity. And I know that there are some new updates uh, in really holding police accountable in Ohio. So if you can start to get those, some of those updates, that'd be great. Okay, let me give a recent update. We resubmitted to Attorney Dave Yost, who is Attorney General for Ohio. So on March the 14th, he denied our ballot language again. He said our title was misleading. Our title has been the same like five or six previous times where he never said the title was misleading. He said protecting Ohioans constitutional rights was misleading. Go figure how's that work. So our attorney went to the Ohio Supreme Court, right? So Supreme Court um, decides they're not going to expedite our case, right? So then our lawyer filed in federal court. Federal court says no, Dave Yost did not violate your First Amendment rights. However, we went to the Sixth District Court of Appeals and we got two Democrats and one Republican. The two Democrats ruled in our favor that Dave Yost did violate our First Amendment, political speech, as well as, as our Fourth and Fourteenth Amendment. However, it gets very interesting because they were two Democrats that ruled in our favor on the three-judge panel. Dave Yost filed a motion for the whole panel in big hearing, which means you get 16, you know, judges. More interest, interestingly, you have 10 Republicans and six Democrats in the 6th District Court of Appeals, which remind your voters, judges are appointed by presidents. The former President Trump appointed eight of these judges that is going to hear our case to enroll. So we're kind of like wondering, will they be fair and go by the Constitution, or will they rule recently like the Supreme Court just ruled when they created presidential immunity of the clear blue sky? I want to stress, in Ohio, our ballot initiative includes all government workers, public servants, including law enforcement officers and correction officers. We're just not targeting cops. We don't want people to think, oh, these people are out to get the cops. No. We don't want our rights being violated. We want to end qualified immunity because we know it's unconstitutional, James. It was created 40 years ago out of the clear blue sky just like the most recent decision where the court decided that the former president should get presidential immunity. They're nowhere in the Constitution, they're unethical, and they're un-American. So we're going to continue this fight in Ohio. On the 5th, we removed the title and we corrected the errors that the Attorney General said was wrong with the ballot language. Our lawyer went over it and we resubmitted it. 
So he has until um, the 15th of July to respond to approve the ballot language or we just keep the fight continuously. So this is where we're at in the state of Ohio. Wow. Okay. On. So it, it, it sounds to me like uh, there is really a concerted effort to just make sure to stop you at every turn in order to really hold uh, elected officials and public officials really accountable for what they, they, they do. And it's funny because a lot of times, no matter if it's Democrat or Republican, they will stop at every turn to be held accountable, but yet they will say, oh, well, we should hold people accountable. And it's like, well, the call's coming from inside the House. Yes. Well, the courts did rule that he was illegally blocking us like he was purposely doing this they did say that if you google brown versus dave yos the court determined he was illegal blocking this and most recently he stated when him there's a guy running against um senator Sherrod brown he's a republican um what's his name i can't think of his name he's a nobody to me anyways dave yos goes on record saying that he thinks if they get rid of qualified immunity, that who's going to work for the government? Well, the government shouldn't violate our civil liberties, our God-given rights, as they would say. Mm -hmm. You know, the Constitution was written for a reason, even though, let me add this, that people of our complexion were not free when the Constitution was written. But them, who take an oath to honor this Constitution, should not be creating, like, court credit doctrines it's like, to me, it's like Jim Crow policies all over again. Because 40 years ago, they gave us the right to vote, correct? Yeah. Well, here, qualified immunity, which means the cops are now replacing, in my opinion, bullets from hanging black men or women or children. Hmm. You know, it, 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 it's happening so much. We hear these stories all across America where within a split second, when they encounter a person, black or brown, Death's going to come because you're doing something. They're going to just shoot you within minutes of a conversation. Yeah. This actually reminds me of what happened to Roger Fortson. Roger Fortson here in Florida was a U.S. airman that was at home and was on FaceTime with his girlfriend. And then the police came to the wrong door. And as they had their guns drawn, they knocked on the door and said the sheriff's office move out of the way of the peephole and waited for him to come to the door. And it's, and he was scared thinking that it was a somebody was coming to rob him. So he had his pistol pointed downwards just in case so he can protect himself because he is a legal gun owner in the state of Florida, which we also have uh, a, a law for concealed carry. And as soon as they saw him, they said, put the gun down. And then less than two seconds later, they shot him and they killed him dead. So yeah, well, yeah. the thing is, is like, so what's the accountability for people who shot and killed a service member of the military? You know, you know what? I I did go to his funeral in Atlanta. I did attend his service. And what is interestingly, I did read where the officer, did he get fired? What was the, did he get fired? Did you follow with that? But I just read where your governor has ended any accountability to sunshine laws in that state. So you should probably Google that where there will be further no accountabilities where cops can, okay, Tell me this. Ask yourself logically, how can law enforcement investigate themselves? They can't. You need a outside agencies to investigate all these police shootings. Yeah. They can never um, investigate themselves. Yeah. I mean, that's that's like um, that's like somebody that commits sexual assault and then you have a bunch of people who commit sexual assault to investigate the person who committed sexual assault. Yes, you can't do that. So that being said, the fight continues in Ohio. We had a 15 year old that was killed by police in Ohio about two weeks ago. He was shot six times. So 
we're hearing more and more and more. We had an incident maybe last month, Frank Tyson. He just came home from prison. He was wrongly convicted of a crime he didn't commit. So here you have the innocent project working to, you know, well, he did 20 plus years for a crime he didn't commit. And then to make um, at an injury, he gets killed in a bar. He tells the cops, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And the one cop responds, I always wanted to be in a bar fight. The guy dies. So where is the accountability? They get paid on leave while they're being investigated. Um, most likely they say, I fit for my life, or they thought he had a weapon. And those are the get a jail free cards. So we have to end the get a jail free cards. We don't get it's, it's that it's that and it's always accepted because of this because Nicole, yeah. times is it well i fear for my life when the per person that they're trying to that, that that they murder was white because the thing is that a lot of times that person will go nah 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 that person was unarmed but for somehow for some reason when you look at this it's considered dangerous yeah our and skin has been dangerous yes our skin has been dangerous. They brought us over here 400 years ago for slavery, um, for, you know, free labor. We built the White House. We have contributed a lot to America, and they seem to want to overlook this. This is why it is so important that states who do have ballot initiatives, that they put it on the ballot. We need to do more than say his name or whose streets are street because to me, James, these aren't our street. These streets are Jim Crow streets. They still have these um, black policies in effect. That still that they're riding all over in these Republican-controlled journal assemblies across America. Mm -hmm. They want to ban African American studies. They want to um, the true history. They don't want to know our true history being taught to our children. They want to whitewash it. Yeah. yeah. So this is a continual pattern here. Well, uh, and you, you touched on a really good point. Um, as far as like we we got to do more than hold up sign and saying we shall overcome. Yes. Because, and I'm going to purse my words very carefully here. I was raised very religious. I was raised Christian. And we were raised to turn the other cheek. We only got two cheeks, so after the second cheek is slapped, what was what's left to do? And what I mean is, the best way for us to do this is organize. But there's a and somebody uh, said this very well. They said there's a difference between mobilizing and organizing. Mobilizing is getting out in the streets, holding up signs, letting people know what's going on. Organizing is really getting together to really change the system on a fundamental level. And you point it to things like uh, ballot initiatives. It's changing yes. the system on a fundamental level because we gotta start saying, oh, you, you, you got the wrong one. We gotta collectively as a community and then partner with white people who are also tired of it and saying, we're not the one, not anymore. Because, and, and my thing is, is like, a lot of people now are starting to see what we have been talking about for the last 400 years. They're, like, yes. they're now starting to see it. They're like, oh, wait. Because especially during the George Floyd protests, when white people were in the front lines and they were getting their heads bashed in by police, and then the courts weren't, weren't siding with them, well, guess what? It was basically they're, real, they're going through now what we, just a modicum of what we were going through. You know what? You made a good point, but I will say this. We have a committee chair who is white. Her husband, Sean Rowe, he did two tours in Iraq. He fought, front line, right? He came home. He was having a post-stress traumatic disorder. The police came to his house, and you know they were talking to Sean, and Sean didn't have a weapon, but somehow they got in the house. They either threw some tear gas in the house. Go go to the story. They shot Sean eight times close range. A veteran, white, having a mental health crisis intervention. So we know they're going to shoot blacks in, let's say, um, poor class um, 
whites are not too wealthy. They're not going in these rich neighborhoods shooting these white children. Because you know what? It would stop. They pick up the phone and call the mayor. They know who they're engaging with. Yeah. But, yeah, in Ohio, it's a, a fact that they do kill more whites and they do black. But because the ratio, we make up like 13%, we notice that more. And plus the media, the media will focus on certain cases. Have you noticed that? Yes. How the media, they will focus on certain cases that they consider high profile cases. To me, what is the price of a life? Ask yourself that question. Because if I am a conservative and I see where they paid out like $3.2 billion to impacted families in the last five years, you know it's a problem. You know these officers have taken a life unjustly and there's no accountability. They're not going to be sentenced or they're, they're not most of the time going to even offer an apology to the family. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you this, James. Cleveland, Ohio is number one in the nation for wrongful conviction. Do you know prosecutors get absolute immunity? Even though they hide the evidence, they know the person is innocent, but yet they go to prison for 15, 20, 30 years for crimes they didn't commit. And most of our most, let me tell you this, most of those prosecutors become judges. How dangerous is that? That's another great point because a lot, a lot of people don't talk about the prosecutors, the yes. DAs, the attorney generals. Yeah. Because the thing is, it's like the, the, the first line, the first line of uh, the first line of defense that the state has is the police. <laughs> but behind that line is the prosecutors, the attorney generals, the district attorneys. And if they are also against the people, you can try to go through the courts all you want, but if they are on the side of the police, if they're on the side of the, of the ultra rich, then there is really no hope for you in the courts, period. And so, excuse me, ending qualified immunity also means ending qualified immunity on them too. Yes, which I we, include that. we included that in our language especially this is why they're against because they know that they're going to lose their immunities too because in last year nevada their their supreme court ended it for all government workers including prosecutors so there has to be accountability if we're going to have a free america for liberty and freedom for all we say justice for all let's mean that justice for all is important to me because I have sons, I have grandsons, nephews, nieces, even women are in danger. You know what? They shoot women too. So, yeah, yeah, like Sandra Bland, right? They 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 killed her. You know, yes. Bernard Taylor was murdered, and so you know, I I know a lot of times we put a lot of focus on black men, but black women are just as much in danger as well. Not to mention sexual assault by police officers. There's over two hundred fifty thousand rape kits that have been untested sitting in the police precincts in this country and how many of those may have dna of police officers in them oh yeah i know there were some in columbus ohio that was convicted these cops you know what i don't know if they think they're above the law because they're they wear a uniform and they're pay are they supposed to protect us is that their duty what is their job description that has to be because that's a question mark for me I think some of them, um, they come from like all white neighborhoods or they never even encountered or grew up with black people. So it's like it's a different experience when they're patrolling, you know, certain neighborhoods where they do, like you said, they see our complexion and they fear us automatically. Yeah. Uh, let me show you this. Uh, I think that was about maybe eight months ago. There was this pregnant girl. She's like 20 woman. She was 21 pregnant, seven months. And they assumed she was stealing in this Kroger's in Ohio. She left out the store. She got in her vehicle. So when the cop approaches her car, he has his gun out. Gun out. So she looks and she goes, you're going to shoot me. She fed for her life. And guess what? He did shoot her. He shot her 21 misdemeanor charges. She lost her life in that baby. Not one pro-life organization 
talked about that fetus who was seven months, who could have survived, who died as well. 21 years old, she lost her life. Shot her close range. Baby died. Where was all these organizations who care about the right to life of that child? It was total silence. That baby's life mattered too. That little girl's life mattered too. They're taught through training James to move out the way, not to get in front of a moving vehicle. This cop got in front where she couldn't move. All she did was like shift the car to move and he shot her. So we have to share these stories like this. Not only do we share these personal stories, but we have to make sure they don't happen again. This is why we're fighting, you know, aggressively. We're getting our word out. We're bringing awareness to our coalition. We're growing our coalition team because we have to end it. Because if they know they're going to be liable or responsible, they will think twice. Because states that have ended it, they are de-escalating. They're not using lethal force as the first option because they know. They know they're going to be held accountable. And everybody talks about accountability and transparency. Well, let's get that. Let's get that. Let's, let's build that trust between law enforcement and the communities they serve. Or therefore, you know what, growing up, I'm much older than you, we used to know who the cops were in our neighborhoods when I grew up. There was none of this police shootings back when I grew up in the 70s and the 80s. This was uncalled for what is going on since the 90s. Started with um, Rodney King. Remember that? Ro I remember that. But Google that Rodney King beat down in the 90s in California. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm older than you think. I'm, I, I just turned 40, actually. So I remember the Rodney King beating down. And you might remember that, but growing up, I, I don't remember all these police shootings or, you know, I think back then maybe cops would shoot you in a leg or something. Now they use killology. They're trying to kill, kill. And they, when they shoot you, they're just not shooting you one time. They're shooting you like they're unloading like multiple times. Tomorrow is my nephew's um, day he got shot in 2017. They shot him twice in his back. When he hit the ground, they shot him in his face and his neck. This is why I think I shared my story before. July 10th, 2017, he took his last heartbeat. He spiritually transitioned. So I know my sister's having an event at City Hall in Columbus, Ohio tomorrow, but I'm on the road. But, you know, you have to relive this traumatized experience over and over because every time, you know, she thinks about the loss of her son, you know, being gone, unarmed, but once again, that complexion that they said they feared for their life. So we're in it for the long run. You know, we look at it either they win at the ballot, we win. But according to our polling, up to 87% of Ohio's, I'm not sure, white, black, libertarian, Republican, um, Democrat, whatever, they want accountability. And this is why they know we're polling high in the state of Ohio. Why they don't want this issue on the ballot. Yeah, so we're, it, go ahead. No, no. It, it kind of reminds me of what Paul Mooney said. White people got the complexion for the protection. Right? Yes. <laughs> you know, but even still, even if you have that complexion, you're still not fully protected because it also depends on your class, too. You know, yes, it, but if, yes. if you know, this is why I fear for the people who are white in places like Appalachia, like what about them? Like, don't they also deserve to, you know, also have justice from these classist racist police forces? And just because a police officer is black, that don't mean nothing to me. Because yeah. they, that they also deserve. They also need to be held accountable. And a lot of times, you know, black police officers to try to prove a point, they'll be more brutal than the white ones sometimes. I agree. They're, they're worse. They're worse because they're trying to prove like I'm in that good old boy network or they want to be accepted, you know, by their, their white colleagues. So look what happened to the black guy. What city was that? How they were all the black officers. He got pulled over. Yeah. Tyree. What was his name? Oh, I Tyree can't Nichols. think of it. Tyree Nichols, yeah. yeah. They were all black officers. They were part of that um, organization that they had and they were violent towards their their own race. 
Yeah. So how, how, how do we be safe if every time people per, perceive, let's say their perception, when they encounter blacks that you broke the law, that you've done something? You know, Ice-T made a movie, and I was watching it earlier. You ever watch Ice-T's movie about equal justice? And it's about a cop, a black cop, that encounters a white cop, and the white cop shoots him, and he shoots him back, the white cop dies. But the movie, the point Ice-T was making, are these numbers are alarming, you know, in law enforcement. And they're at the, they're like bottom feeders. Because, we, like you said, the prosecutors are way up here, and the judges, and the senators... And they're all wearing those white cloths. We don't know. They said that the FBI did a, re a research. And they found out that more and more of these people are also in these white supremacists. They're skinheads. And they're becoming law enforcement officers. They're your senators. You're your Congress people. They're your judges. So those are alarming statistics that we should, you know, stress to our audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Do you know that they're being recruited? Recruited and they get rewarded. I'm going to stress that they get rewarded. They get promoted to sergeants, lieutenants. In our city alone, I'm going to say this there's one officer on SWAT that has killed four individuals. Mm -hmm. Two were minors. So they get rewarded. Um, I, don't, I, I wonder how do they have a conscience? How do you sleep at night when you take a life? This is me, like you. I grew up Christian. I grew up Catholic. Um, and they teach you in the Bible that I shall not kill, right? Mm -hmm. Correct? So I wonder, do they see that face in their sleep? Do they think, uh, are they apologetic? I made a mistake. But would they ever say, hey, I made a mistake? Say it was a prosecutor. How do you sleep if you frame the innocent black man? You put him on death row. They spend 20 plus years and then the innocent projects comes hey we have this new dna that wasn't available back then and they free them and then you gotta turn around they just had to pay this one family 45 million dollars james that doesn't come from that prosecutors the taxpayers are paying those um lawsuit money yeah yeah and in fact i want to show this article too because a lot of people you know and this is why i say it's important to do what miss cynthia is doing across the board across the country especially if you're in places like california i think that's important because look deputy gangs a cancer within los angeles county sheriff's department scathing report finds says a 70-page report by the civilian oversight commission special counsel accused the department of harboring secretive groups that must be immediately excised basically meaning they have gangs literally in their the police departments um, it talks about how uh, the, it says the members who engage in egregious conduct, like using excessive force and threatening colleagues as a cancer, must be banned immediately. Also, accuse the union that represents the sheriff's deputies of failing to stop the gangs and protecting alleged members. And if, you know, I remember you know watching this report, and one of the things that the the invest the person that investigated and uncovered all this one of the things that she was talking about was that you know they got rewarded for police brutality for killings all these things and these are gangs of police officers in los angeles and they're in different divisions they have different names and they even get tattoos right and so when people want to talk about the crips and the bloods i'm like they ain't got nothing on the boys in blue and i'm not talking about the crips Cause you know what they're they can do it legally these yeah. games they're, they're legally and i'm glad you said that P please go to phoenix the doj determined that phoenix was purposely killing black and brown people purposely in their report last month that they released purposely killing them same as california they if they would encounter, you know, people of color, Hispanics, and at the end of it, you're going to have a dead body on the ground with multiple bullets. And they're going to say, hey, we thought the phone or the bag of candy or the brush was a gun. Qualified immunity comes in. As soon as those magic words come out their mouth, everything stops. Yeah. That's why I also, whenever I have my phone, brightly colored case, 
So they can't be like, oh my God, he had a gun. Uh, this ain't black. Yeah. This is yellow. But they don't care. Black wait a minute. No, 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 no. Black I man. Oh, right, yeah. But I was going to say. Well, anyways, yeah, we are going to continue. I will let you know the attorney's general decision on July the 15th. Our briefs are due in the 6th District Court of Appeals on the 17th. And then we have oral arguments with the whole 16th panel on um, October 30th. So we like to pack the courts with impacted families throughout Ohio, as well as, you know, men and women that have been wrongly convicted and set free, because that's all a form of, you know, immunity. And what's most importantly, we have to stress, and I'm going to stress this, all immunities are unconstitutional before I got this line, whether it's the presidential or it's qualified immunity, prosecutors, judges, they all have to be held accountable because we don't get a qualified immunity, the citizens. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Man, and here is the text of the, the, the ballot initiative that you guys are trying to uh, push through for Ohioans to vote on. I think this is deeply important. And if you and your state would, you know, ha if you live in a ballot initiative state and if you can push ballot initiatives similar to this, get in touch with the Ohio Coalition to Inqualified Immunity so that you can at least even copy this language so that they yeah. can also, you can also in qualified immunity in your state and actually hold your public officials accountable. It's not just police, it's all public officials. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We're just not targeting them. They're like the bottom feeders. We yeah. want all government officials, including that attorney general, that he knows that he has violated our first amendment. He has defamed us. I'm telling you, it's like a just Google it. You'll be interesting what we're doing, but we are taking it to them, the fight to them. You know, they said in one of his report, he said, like, how dare us challenge his authority? Why not? This is we the people. I mean, aren't we supposed to be the boss? Yes, we pay your salary, the taxpayers. So you took that oath, right? They take an oath, correct? And in that oath, they took an oath to honor the Constitution. So honor it. The framers would be turning over in their graves, James, if they knew that the courts have just created, you know, all this that is unfair to the people. Because it's always about we, the people, and our powers. In the Constitution, it clearly states, if we don't agree with something, we have a right to abolish that. Absolutely. And we need to abolish qualified immunity has to go. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, also, where can they find you? And uh, what, uh, you know, besides this, you know, is there any other events that you'll be holding as well in the, in the near future? Yeah, um, my sister's having one tomorrow in Columbus, Ohio at City Hall. I believe the address is 90 Broad Street because I'm currently in Atlanta and she's currently, you know, in Young's, I mean, Columbus, Ohio. But our website says it all. They can volunteer, donate on that website because as we travel throughout Ohio, hitting all these counties, because we submitted signatures with people from over maybe 40 plus counties that said, hey, we agree there has to be accountability. So we're reaching everybody. We want to exclude everybody. Like you said, our white allies are on the front line with us. We need them because we make up only 11% of the population or the voting in Ohio. So we know we need the white allies who are paying attention to the policy. Remember that, James. People should pay attention to the policy. In Ohio, we have none. So we want to create it. We want to save lives and build trust, you know, with law enforcement. Absolutely. Thank you so very much for joining me once again. I cannot wait. Please return with a new update so that we can keep the, the viewers up to date on what's going on in Ohio. And I am hoping that this is a massive victory. So then once it starts in Ohio, it can spread throughout the United States. Yeah, we are the next civil rights movement. We consider ourselves a historical movement here in Ohio. Thank you so very much, Miss Cynthia. It's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you too. All Have right. a wonderful All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so very much for watching my channel, and I deeply appreciate it from the top and bottom of my heart. If you wish to support the channel further so I can keep bringing you content, 
that is educational and informative, you can become a patron on patreon.com forward slash jbfond. You can find that link in the pinned comment or in the description below. No matter what you give, you'll be supporting independent media and education that helps make the world better. Thank you so much. And you can watch more of my content here. Mwah. Forehead kisses and have a beautiful day.